you never fully know your wife until she divorces you because the angel you marry is never the devil that you divorce, ever. Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a compelling story. She instantly regrets divorcing her husband of five years for a chat. We'll explore the reasons behind her decision, the aftermath of her choice, and the valuable lessons learned about love and relationships. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on our latest videos. Let's jump right in and break it all down. The most shocking prenup I've ever seen, which was enforceable, had a provision that said that for every 10 pounds the wife gained in the marriage, she would lose $10,000 a month in alimony. He was very concerned that she was going to become less attractive and he was going to become more wealthy. So his solution to this was in the prenuptial agreement. He wanted a clause that said if they divorced, she was going to get like $70,000 a month for alimony. But for every 10 pounds she gained from the date of marriage, she would forfeit 10,000 a month worth of alimony. And it was designed to sort of create an incentive that she would remain thin. And that was enforceable. Meaning they tried to challenge and set aside that provision. And the court said, this is a disgusting provision. I don't know why you married this person, but it's enforceable. It's a contract. The two of you signed it and you had a right to sign it and you agreed to these rules and they may be ridiculous rules, but you agreed to them and you have a right to do that. I, I think it's a kind of love. I think it's a form of love. I, is it a form of love I'd be interested in? No, I think it's very shallow in some ways. There's something very honest about it. I mean, you can't argue with the fact that there's something very upfront about it. He was making very clear and putting in writing Here's the value you bring to this relationship. I consider your physical appearance vitally important to this relationship. And by the way, don't skip the other side of that equation. She was going to get $70,000 a month. That's a very impressive number. So I think she, she also understood there was a value to be attached to him as well. Is it something I would be interested in on either side of that equation? No, but... Do I have a right to say to someone that's not love? I, I don't think I have a right to say that to someone. I think that if this is an economy the two of you have agreed on, you know, as a lawyer, see, I, my job as a lawyer is not to look, like, I don't look at it that way. I look at the engineering of it. So, like, if I'm representing her in that transaction, all I could think is, okay, so we're going to want her baseline weight to be as high as possible. So I'm going to want her to have pennies in her pockets after at the day we sign the prenup, because you'd have to establish a baseline, right? Because if you say gaining 10 pounds, you'd have to establish a baseline weight on the date of the marriage. So if I'm her, I want that to be as high as possible. So I'm going to be putting pennies in my pockets and eating as many cheeseburgers as I can before the weigh-in. Now, we're getting divorced I'm going to be like a wrestler. I'm going to be in the sauna. I'm going to be sweating as much as I can. I'm going to take diuretics. I'm going to eat nothing but like grilled vegetables for a week or two. You know, I'm going to take off every ounce of clothing I can because I want to minimize my weight. This is why lawyers don't get invited to parties because that's how we analyze problems. Like I didn't hear that and go, what is the nature of their coupling? I looked at it and I went, oh, I could play with that. I could do whoever I'm representing in that transaction. I could figure out a way to, you know, kind of make that work. First off, let's address the idea of standards. Having standards is not about being picky or unrealistic. It's about knowing what you want and need in a relationship to ensure both partners are happy and fulfilled. Standards help set the foundation for a healthy and respectful partnership. When someone says he wants a partner who takes care of herself, both physically and emotionally, it's not shallow. It's about wanting a relationship where both parties can thrive. Now, Let's move on to the concept of marital contracts. We're not just talking about prenups here. We're talking about agreements that outline expectations and responsibilities within the marriage. Think of it like an athletic contract. In sports, contracts are set up to ensure both parties meet certain standards and goals. They're designed to motivate, protect, and create a clear understanding of what's expected. So why shouldn't marriages have similar agreements? Imagine a contract that encourages her to stay fit, maintain her health, and invest in her relationship. It's not about being controlling or superficial. It's about creating a mutual commitment to a healthy lifestyle and a strong marriage. This kind of contract can serve as a constant reminder of the promises made to each other, providing motivation to stay committed and work through challenges. 
Here's the thing. Such contracts can also help prevent the pitfalls that often lead to divorce. By clearly outlining what each partner expects and needs, there's less room for misunderstandings and unmet expectations. It's a proactive approach to building a marriage that lasts, rather than just hoping things will work out. Critics might argue that this makes marriage sound like a business transaction rather than a romantic partnership. But let's be real. Successful marriages require effort, communication, and yes, sometimes practical agreements. Romance is important, but so is ensuring that both partners are on the same page and working towards common goals. Having a marital contract doesn't diminish the love and romance in a relationship. It enhances it by providing a strong foundation of trust and mutual respect. It's about acknowledging that marriage is a serious commitment that requires effort from both partners. It's a tool to help couples stay motivated and dedicated to each other, rather than falling into complacency or taking each other for granted. But just know that women can never get satisfied. Right after I got divorced, I got into a situation with somebody I knew from work. And how quickly after the, the divorce? Well, like immediately. It's like a rebound, right? I guess is what they would call it. Okay. And like we like the day after? Maybe, maybe. Like, sort of, yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh -huh. So I knew him, right? We worked together. That's how we met. Wait, wait, how long are you married? Almost five years. Did you guys ever have any kids? Yes. And you got with this person a day after? Yes, but see what? I thought he was like the love of my life. A day after a divorce. Okay. Yes. Sure. And you thought he'd be living with you? Yes. Like I thought we were going to be together. We were going to be in love. But then that wasn't the case. Because he was married. Oh. Which I know it sounds terrible, right? That sounds but terrible. I thought he was just like the love of my life. And we met under these unusual Ooh. circumstances. Which technically, like, I was married what? too, right? Like, so... Wait a f Okay, no, sorry, go on, go no, on. I'm so not like, processing. The time I moved out of my house to the time my divorce was finalized was probably like six months. Maybe a little longer. <laughs> So like technically I was married. When right? when this 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 the so like the day after you were like hey I'm divorcing you. So how that went? My ex-husband? Yeah. Well, we had like a conversation. And we were it. like okay, so it's ending in a divorce. We understand. And yes. the next day you were with that dude? Well, no, I mean not no, not exactly. But very soon after, yet. But he was married? Yes, yeah, so I was under the impression that he was the same kind of married that I was. Which, the like, same kind? <laughs> what kind of married is that? <laughs> which is like... That's insane. No, hear me out. So, like... I... Okay. No, I'm hearing you out. It just doesn't okay. really vibe with my personal morals on that. Right? But no, no, no. Go, go, so go, like, go ahead. That, legally... You, you say your thing. We're trying to get context for how you ended up here. So, go ahead. Go legally ahead. married, right? Oh, yeah. Like, was not divorced yet, but we were not living together. Yeah, but you also met up with the dude the day after, and he was married as well. Not the time. day after. That makes... Within a couple of weeks, right? So, okay. anyways, he ha had me under the impression that they were getting divorced, but they owned a home together they owned vehicles together so it was like a longer process right but yeah so, you guys had a f kid yeah but we didn't have any like finances together so it wasn't hard okay right? so he was like i'm leaving like he's they're not together anymore right they're just in this process of getting divorced that was my understanding turned out that wasn't the case at all and i found that out several months how long are you guys together me and the guy we were together maybe six months. You and the married guy. Yeah, married. Banging That's it what up. I thought. Banging it up. <laughs> you were. F well, yeah, of course. And he was married. Yes. That's homewrecker behavior. Technically, that is true. That's yeah. Embarrassing. Yeah. But they're still together. Wait so a minute, and you fun. signed a lease expecting him to live with you? Yeah, they're still together. Does she know? Oh yeah. Are they open? No. Future wife, please don't cheat on me. <laughs> I would be at okay. So you signed a lease expecting to live with him because you thought he was the love of your life, well, like a, a very, married man that you when, okay, met. Wait, 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 wait. When you say it like that, it sounds bad. But I mean, girl, I'm going off what you're saying. <laughs> no, and what I'm saying is that right now, right? Of course, now I see your perspective. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, did you time. get the apartment expecting to live with him? Eventually, yeah. I thought. What eventually was eventually? You would move in. I don't know, within like a few months. There was something that was happening that he was waiting. You know, there was like a Damn, kind of maybe a he had a wife. 
Yeah. So, so I couldn't really afford it, but it was also the cheapest place I could find. So I don't really know what I could have done differently necessarily. And it does sound crazy. So that's how you started getting into debt? Yeah. So when I got divorced, I didn't have any credit card debt at all. I had credit cards, but sure. no balances on them. Yeah, yeah. And, but I did have all this student loan debt that's been there. So, okay. yeah. So I ended up in the credit card debt because I didn't make enough money to live my life, but I had well, to. Well, you right? signed up for a life for two yeah. with this like dream that didn't exist. Yeah. It's so sad. It was kind of, it feels like a fan, was it like a fantasy in your head? No. Why did you think he was going to move in and take care of half the payment? Because that's what he was telling me. Okay. Like so he, he was, was like, leaving you. I'm going to marry you. You're the love of my life. Did they have I kids? Wish I'd, yes. Teenager. This is gross. Okay. It um, is gross. But is they're, it? They're so happy. You, you, you think so? Okay. It is. I mean, um, I, it's embarrassing, right? But it's also like a part of my life. It happened two years ago. <laughs> two years ago, that's a long time. <laughs> but I'm trying to do better, right? That's why. I'm okay, here. sure. And my life is so much better. So you now. started going into debt because of that, and then well, not because of the guy. It was two years ago, but because you lived a lifestyle too high because he didn't move in. Yeah, because I truly could not afford. Okay, my life with well, that the was job two years that I ago. Had. So yeah, what have we done these last two years? Here's the rundown. She separates from her husband and starts a new relationship with this co-worker. He assures her he'll leave his wife, and she believes him. She even goes as far as getting an apartment, convinced that he'll move in with her. But surprise, surprise, he doesn't leave his wife. She's left out in the cold, realizing too late that she was just another side piece. Let's get real here. This wasn't a rebound. She was already emotionally checked out of her marriage long before it officially ended. The affair didn't start after the separation. It was going on well before. And she has the audacity to think it's cute and adorable? Please. She's full of it. The married coworker is the real reason she left her husband. This wasn't about finding herself or needing space. It was about chasing a fantasy with someone who was never going to leave his wife. And you can see the delusions that got her there. Women like this will tell themselves anything to justify their actions. This is why men are increasingly wary of marriage. Women often have a backup plan, and they're not afraid to use it. They're more deceptive than men, knowing how to lie and be discreet. They love to dream about these ideal men because it's so much easier than dealing with the heavy responsibilities of real relationships. Think about it. Women can be horrible and cold, manipulating situations to fit their narratives. This is a prime example of why many men don't want to marry. They've seen too many cases like this, where a woman jumps ship for a better option, only to find herself alone and bitter. And let's not ignore the societal double standards here. If a man were to do the same thing, he'd be vilified. But when women do it, there's always some excuse or justification. It's time to call it what it is, deception and lack of accountability. Women need to understand that real relationships require honesty, commitment, and hard work. Chasing after fantasies and backup plans will only lead to heartache and disappointment. They need to stop lying to themselves and others, face the consequences of their actions, and take responsibility for their choices. 50-50 divorces aren't fair. Stay-at-home moms should be given 100% of everything in divorce and should be awarded alimony for life. First, a little bit of data for background. 80% of stay-at-home moms have zero retirement, which is why elderly females are the most vulnerable. This kind of mindset is just a me, me, me mentality, and she's not in it for the we in the family dynamic. Because why the hell are you in a marriage if you're already thinking about your exit plan? Because thinking about your retirement or any money that you would have in case this man is not around or in case you get divorced means that you're already thinking about it and you think about it enough, eventually you're gonna follow through with it. And why the hell would you be entitled to 100% when he's busting his ass every single day to give you everything that you want? And it's not his fault that you resent having children because you feel like you missed out on life. It's not his fault that you feel like you need to get paid for having his children. Do you see how selfish and delusional and entitled that is? He doesn't get paid for providing for you. He goes to a job. He misses milestones. He misses family events. He misses time with his family in order to give you what you need and you just want to take it from him.
Like make it make sense. And imagine committing to somebody and telling them that you want to spend the rest of your life with them and committing to, to them in a marriage. But then simultaneously, when you feel resentment and you're upset at your lifestyle, you want to destabilize him to take 100% of everything that you guys have built together. That's selfish as hell. And what kind of person are you to say to yourself, oh, I want this man to suffer because I'm suffering because I'm just a miserable ass human being. That's not love. That's not compassion. That's not empathy. And are you really looking at the best interest of your family and your kids if you're trying to destabilize the other side of the fence? Like, be for real. And in terms of alimony, if men are expected to pay their way after a divorce, then you should only get alimony for one freaking year. Get your shit together, grow up, get a job, make your own money and stop depending on a man that you hated so much that you decided to break your family up and leave it behind all for what, a freaking paycheck? Well, congratulations. Now you actually have to go work and stop being a mooch and a lazy ass wife and a human being to someone that tried to take care of you and have a family with you. Okay, bye. First off, marriage used to be a partnership, two people coming together to build a life, share responsibilities, and support each other. But these days, it feels more like a contract with all the benefits skewed in one direction. And guess what? It's not in favor of the men. Imagine signing a contract where, if things go south, you owe 50% of everything you've worked for because she decided to leave. It's not just about money, though. It's about the emotional and psychological toll it takes. Men are expected to shoulder the burden, and when the relationship fails, they're left picking up the pieces while being stripped of their assets. And they wonder why we don't want relationships or marriage anymore. There's literally no upside. The risks far outweigh the rewards. You're expected to be the provider, the protector, and when things go wrong, you're the one left with nothing. The system is rigged, and men are starting to wake up to this harsh reality. Let's look at the divorce rates. They're skyrocketing, and it's mostly women who are initiating the divorces. And why not? The current legal system almost guarantees them a favorable outcome. Alimony, child support, division of assets. It's all designed to protect them, leaving men high and dry. It's no surprise that more men are opting out. Why sign up for a deal where you have everything to lose and nothing to gain? Marriage has become a liability, not a partnership. The romantic notion of till death do us part has been replaced with till I'm unhappy and want half your stuff. Men are no longer going to tolerate a contract that sets them up for failure. They're choosing to focus on their personal growth, their careers, and their hobbies. They're building a life that's fulfilling without the risk of losing it all because someone decided they wanted out. Some men are more delusional about marriage than women actually are because they don't understand that there is a very distinct difference between getting married to someone because you want to build a life with them and children might be part of it and getting married because you want to have children. Most men decide to get married when or because they are ready to settle down and have kids. So they start looking for a woman then wants the same thing. And they essentially go with the best choice available to them at the moment. The one that's going to be the best and most enthusiastic, dedicated mom, um, who's most aligned on their values and interests. And oftentimes that's all that a woman is looking for when she's getting married, a dad. He's imagining the life with the wife and the kids and the white picket fence. And he actually gets exactly that. He did marry a woman who was the best, most dedicated, enthusiastic mom. He never stopped to consider that kind of focus could also mean that he's the last one on the list. He's no longer the recipient of all that enthusiasm and passion. He's frustrated in the bedroom and he's mad at her, but why? You were looking for a mother for your children. You found her. She couldn't wait to have your babies, babies, babies. You got exactly what you signed up for. Why are you mad, bro? First off, the traditional view of marriage is that a man is supposed to put his wife before all others, and his wife should do the same. In theory, it sounds like a beautiful partnership based on mutual love and respect. But the reality is far from this ideal. Marriage often turns into a complex web of expectations, 
disappointments, and unending compromises. For many men, marriage can feel like a trap. They enter into it for love, hoping to build a life with someone who shares their dreams and values. But once the honeymoon phase fades, they find themselves facing a harsh reality. The love that brought them together gets overshadowed by financial stress, constant demands, and the pressure to live up to an ideal that's impossible to maintain. On the other hand, women are often seen as approaching marriage from a more pragmatic perspective. While love is certainly a factor, many women also consider marriage a strategic move for financial stability and social status. They're looking for security, a partner who can provide for them and their future children, and a relationship that elevates their standing in society. This difference in approach creates a fundamental disconnect. Men feel like they're sacrificing everything for love, while women are perceived as treating marriage like a business deal. It's no wonder that when things go south, men feel betrayed and used, while women feel justified in seeking what they believe they deserve. So, is marriage really the most useless, pathetic, unending suffering imposed upon humanity? For many, it certainly feels that way. The institution of marriage, as it stands today, is fraught with challenges that make it less appealing than ever before. It's no longer about love and companionship. It's about navigating a minefield of expectations and obligations that leave men feeling trapped. 18, divorced at 21. Second marriage, married at 25, divorced at 28. Third engagement, engaged at 29, ended it at 30, but I kept the ring. I'm still keeping Tom Brady on his toes. We should not be afraid to leave these men. We are not stuck with these people. Marriage is not a sanctimonious thing. It is It is paperwork. It's Quality woman like Mia Khalifa seems to not think that having three divorces before the age of 30 seems to be a little bit of a red flag. For those who don't know, Mia Khalifa is an ex-corn star who got very, very famous for her work in corn and now has maintained the following ever since. Now, I don't have any problem with people who work in this industry, but Mia Khalifa is delusional on a whole new level. Don't forget the time she gets invited on a sports podcast and the guy introduces her as the former porn star and then she freaks out because she only worked in the industry for three months. Um, first of all, I was in the adult industry for three months, so you need to fucking fact check before you ask me to call into your shitty radio station. Goodbye. I, I, we weren't supposed to mention that she was ever in porn? <laughs> like, that's not how it works, Mia. Just because you worked in the industry for three months, it could have been three days. If everyone remembers you from that thing, that is why you have the following that you have. Nobody goes, hey, do you know Mia Khalifa? And they go, isn't that the girl who knows a lot about football? No, that is not, no. We're getting off topic. It blows my mind because people will actually listen to her advice and say that it's not going to be a red flag if a guy hears that you have had three divorces and you're like 30 years old, that a quality guy is not going to be like, um, that's not normal. Now, I think she forgets that she might be able to get away with it because she has a big social media following. So there's always somebody out there for everybody. But if you're telling the average girl who's going to go get three divorces before the age of 30, they're probably not going to have a line of guys that are like, okay, I'll be next. When you work in a field that these girls are working in, you're putting yourself in a box to lower your chances of having a successful relationship. Whether you want to take that risk or not, that is completely up to you. But do not try to spin having three divorces like it was some good learning experience. Because that in a relationship, when things get hard, you give up. That's what it shows. The reality is most relationships that last more than five years the love that you had for that person in the way beginning is going to fade. You're not going to have that same intense feeling that you once had when you first met them. But it's a decision that you want to make it work with this person. And people like her who can just go from person to person to person, th these words mean nothing to them. Getting married means nothing to them. Dating means nothing to them. Could you imagine being like super excited to get married, but then your partner is just like, yeah, like this is my fifth time, but you know, yeah, I'm totally excited. Once you get into a marriage and you want a divorce just because you feel like it and not because of an actual substantial issue like abuse or financial problems, then now mentally every single time it is hard for you in a relationship, that's going to be your go-to. If you're five years in and you're like, huh, I don't really like him as much as I used to. All right, I'll just get another divorce.
Listen, you guys can make whatever decision you want, but people who live like this have what I call shiny object syndrome. They will see something better and they will give up on what was once something very important to them. And she might be able to get away with it because she's Mia Khalifa and she has millions of followers. But your name is Margaret and you work at CVS. You're not going to have the same kind of options. Please, even though it sounds like I'm hating on the girl, just keep in mind who you're taking this advice from. Because even she'll get upset if you bring up the reason why she's able to speak on the platform that she has now. Goodbye. So do with that information what you will. Let's be real. A woman who's been ran through can't find a meaningful relationship because she's not looking for one. She's chasing the next high, the next thrill, without any thought of the consequences. It's not about building something lasting. It's about satisfying immediate desires. And when the excitement fades, so does the commitment. It's easy to blame external factors, but the reality is, if you're the common factor in multiple failed marriages, the problem lies with you. Stability, loyalty, and commitment seem foreign concepts to someone who hops from one relationship to another without resolving underlying issues. Women who jump from marriage to marriage often bring a truckload of unresolved baggage. They enter each new relationship with the same unresolved issues, expecting a different outcome. But here's the kicker. Doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. And let's not ignore the societal implications. Women often receive sympathy and understanding for their relationship woes, while men are expected to shoulder the blame. But it's time to shift the narrative. Women need to take responsibility for their actions and the role they play in their relationship failures. Marriage is not a game or a casual commitment. It's a serious, lifelong partnership that requires effort, compromise, and dedication. Treating it like a series of fleeting flings only leads to heartache and disillusionment.